This is how to build a character in Shadowrun 5th edition in about 12 minutes. In my experience, one of the biggest barriers to entry uh, Shadowrun or any RPG, honestly, is the character build process. It can be very intimidating if you don't know how it's done or what's right or what's wrong. This is my way of getting players started in the game as quickly as possible in about a quarter of an hour. Now, it's faster for me to talk about it than it, than it is for you to do it, of course. You'll have to look up different things that you might want to choose, so it will take you more, literally more than 12 minutes, but honestly, it doesn't have to be any more than half an hour. You do that, you got a character, and you're ready to go. It would be remiss of me to fail to mention that you don't actually have to build a character to start playing Shadowrun. There are amazing archetypes available in various Shadowrun products. I've got a separate video on that, so check that out. This is how to build a character in Shadowrun 5th edition. If you're using 6th edition, that's fine. The process isn't actually that dissimilar. Shadowrun, it's a classless system. It is a skill-based system. So if you're used to building in D&D, this is a little bit different but follow along, it's not that hard, and actually it's pretty fun. So first, you pick a meta type. The meta type in Shadowrun is your species, or your, your race in other systems. You can pick a meta type from the meta type attribute table over on page 66. On your character sheet, add the low number, that's the one to the left of the slash, to its corresponding attribute. There are eight attributes, body, agility, reaction, strength, willpower, logic, intuition, and charisma. There are also two special attributes listed in the table, edge and essence. Fill those in as well. You can ignore the I and I column, that's the initiative column, so just leave the initiative box on your character sheet blank. As you can see, I'm using a computer spreadsheet that's analogous to the paper character sheet in the back of the Shadowrun book. It's just easier for me to do it this way for the video. Okay, next you can boost your special attributes. Turn to the priority table on page 65. This table is tricky at first, but it makes sense after you've used it a few times. The priority table is a sliding scale for character traits. For every column, you get to choose one and only one cell from rows A to E. So for instance, if you really, really want to be super rich, then you'd choose row A for the column labeled resources, because you want lots of resources. But that means you can't use row A for any column. A different example. Maybe you don't care about material wealth, but you want to have lots of skill points. In that case, you'd choose row A for column labeled skills, and row B or C or D or E for resources. By the end of the process, you'll have chosen exactly one cell for each row and column intersection. To keep things simple for you, I recommend choosing cells that give you the least number of choices. This means you have less to choose from, but when you're starting out, that can be a good thing. It's hard to choose stuff when you don't yet have any context for what a good or bad choice is. Okay, so the step we're on now is boosting your special attributes. For the meta type column, of the priorities table on page 65, choose row B. Unless you're playing as a troll, this column grants your meta type a number of special attributes, uh, attribute points, that's the number in parentheses after the meta type. For example, human, parentheses seven. On your character sheet, use these points to boost the values of edge and magic and resonance in, in the attributes section. So edge, you can think of it as luck. Now there's a maximum of six for that, unless you're human, that it has a maximum of seven. Edge is a good thing to have. Magic and resonance, well, in this case, you probably don't need that. This is a non-magic using build specifically. I'll do a different video on what to do for a magic user. So you can probably treat magic and resonance as a dump stat. Step three, boost your physical and mental attributes. Once again, for the attributes column on page 65, you're gonna look at the, the table on page 65, you're choosing something for attributes. Now we've already chosen row B for something, so we can't choose that. I'm gonna recommend that you choose row C for the attributes column. This grants you 16 points to spend 
of your physical, that's body, agility, reaction, strength, and mental willpower, logic, intuition, charisma attributes found in the attribute section of your character sheet. No attribute score may exceed its maximum, and its maximum is the number after the slash to the right of the slash in the metatype attribute table on page 66. Only one may meet its maximum. None can go above its maximum. Only one can be at its maximum. So keep that in mind while you're boosting your physical and mental attributes. Step four, choose your magic and resonance rating. For the magic and resonance column, just choose E. You're not playing a magic character. I've got a separate, I'll do a separate video on that. So if you want to do a physical ad adept, mystic adept, aspected magician, magician, this is not the video for you. Step five, skills. For skills, well, we've already chosen B. We've all already chosen C. So for skills, I'm going to recommend that you choose row D, as in delta, for the skills column. Turn to page 130 to read uh, through the skills that are available. Each skill at rating one costs one point. If you spend four skill points on a skill, you get that skill at rating four. A skill rating dictates how many dice you add to your dice pool when rolling a skill test. Buy a few skills that are important to you and put at least four points into each. If a skill has a specialization listing, then you can spend another skill point to gain two dice for skill tests that involve your area of specialization. For example, the Blades skill costs one point to add to your character sheet's skills section. Were you to take that skill, you'd write Blades 1 on your character sheet to indicate that you have the Blades skill at rating 1. You might append another point, though, to specialize in Knives. In that case, you write Blades parentheses knives, one parentheses plus two. That means you've got one die in blades and two extra die if it's, a not, if it's with knives specifically. Step number six, resources. For the resources column, choose the only row that's left, which is A. This gives you 450,000 new yen. New yen is money in Shadowrun. It sounds like a lot, and it is, but it does go fast. The gear checklist sidebar on page 94 can help you focus on what's essential, but if you happen to have the Run Faster source book, shopping is even easier. Run Faster has pre-made packs of gear on page 228, uh, lifestyle, lifestyle kits, magic packs, and a whole lot more. But assuming you're just using the core rulebook, Here's a basic Shadow Runner pack costing 20,000 new yen. You want a fake sin, that's rating 1, page 443. Metalink Comlink, page 439. Colt America Light 36, or L36 Light Pistol with two spare clips. It's on page 426. 100 rounds of ammo, page 433. A knife, page 423. Armor clothing or a vest, page 436. Glasses with image link, page 444. Mapsoft for the city that you're running the camp you're playing the campaign in, page 442. Standard cred stick, page 443. A flashlight, 449. A respirator, rating one, page 449. And a backpack. That's 20,000 new yen, leaving you with 430,000 new yen to spend on other really important additions like a vehicle or cyberware or a dock wagon contract, page 450. That's super important. And a lifestyle, page 95. So you want to spend every last new yen you have because you can't really take it into the game with you. So spend it now during the build process. The new yen you start with in-game is derived from your lifestyle. Again, that's on page 95. You spend money on a lifestyle pack or a lifestyle kit 
and then you roll the die listed by that lifestyle to find out how much new yen you get for your in-game pocket money. Step 7. Spend karma and make contacts. In Shadowrun, you don't earn experience points, you earn karma. At character creation, you start with 25 karma to spend. Turn to page 73 and look at the positive qualities and negative qualities table. Positive qualities cost karma points, and they grant you some in-game benefit. Negative qualities give you back karma points, but they impose some kind of in-game penalty. This is probably my favorite part of the Shadowrun build process. Read over the qualities, choose some positive and negative qualities for your character. You can only have 25 points of positive qualities, 25 points of negative qualities, so don't feel like you have to hit zero karma. After you've recorded your qualities, turn to page 98 to learn what you can do with any leftover karma points you might have. A shadow runner thrives on contacts. Contacts cost karma, and you have to spend karma on two different traits of your contact. There's the contacts connections and the contacts loyalty. The contacts connection represents how much influence they have in the world to get things done. The higher the number, the more influential, the more powerful that contact is. Their loyalty represents how much of a risk they're willing to go to in order to help you when you make a request. A contact costs one karma for each point of connection rating and one karma for each point of loyalty rating. For example, let's say I've already spent 17 karma on qualities, positive and negative qualities. So I have eight more karma left that I have to get rid of. I decide to spend them on contacts. I could spend all eight on a fairly well-connected beat cop, a connection rating of five, meaning the beat cop knows several people and has a moderate degree of social influence. I don't think my game master would expect a beat cop to have any greater than a five. In fact, five might be pushing it. Maybe I'll knock that down to a four uh, connection rating and then a loyalty rating of, say, four. He's my buddy. Actual friendship. That's going to be my get-out-of-jail-free card. Then again, maybe I don't want to spend it all on one eventuality. Maybe I don't want to assume I'm going to get caught. So instead, maybe I have a mechanic contact with a connection rating of three and a loyalty of two. That's five spent. And a fence with a connection rating of two and a loyalty of one. Just business. Whatever you decide, contacts are the way you're going to interface with the world outside of your own party. They're important. You want to have a couple of friends around to help you through tough times. In case you need help coming up with a contact, there are sample ones on page 390, which you can just use, or you can use to base your own idea of, of a contact that you might have. The additional purchases and restrictions table on page 98 provides six different ways you can spend excess karma, along with associated restrictions. Step 8. Initiative and Limits. Time for some final calculations. Turn to page 101 and use the final calculations table to determine the value for the empty fields remaining on your character sheet. If you purchased a com link, then your data processing score is the rating of your com link. If you didn't get a com link, you can ignore matrix values altogether. And now you have a character. Shadowrun 5th edition is a complex system, so this character build is intentionally limiting. You might not understand everything on your character sheet at first, but playing the game is the best way to learn how it works. So go play with this character. It might not be the most amazing character. You're not getting as much choice as you possibly could, but it gets you started, and that's the most important thing. I think I'm contractually obligated to say things like chummer and oh my, I'll see you in the shadows.